2 John. Verse 8. Look to yourself that we lose not no thing which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Let's stop there. Realize how many times this message is trying to get out behind the scenes. Abideth not. The doctrine of Christ. If you do not do the doctrine of Christ, you don't have God. Now the Bible says you got to study. You got to rightly divide. You got to know what the doctrine of Christ to prove this scripture in your life. We're not called to build an ark. But we are called to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And there are people out there today that said, oh, I got God with me. God is working with me. God and I are a team. And they are not abiding in the doctrine. And they're living a lying life. 1 John 1, 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his words not in us. The word just said by John, the beloved disciple, if you don't do and live in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, do not say you have God. Because you don't. <laughs> Excuse me. We read in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, I believe it was. I'm looking. Oh, chapter 15, verse 10. If you do the commandments of Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus Christ is in you. If you obey the commands of Jesus, if you abide in the doctrine, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, you're either abiding or you're not abiding. Now, Jesus said in chapter 15 of John, if you abide in my doctrine, you have my love. If you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you have both the Father and the Son. Now Jesus said when he done what the Father had told him to do, the commandment the Father had set before the Son that was fulfilled by the Son, the love of the Father was in him. And Jesus said in that very verse 10, if you do my commandments, my love is in you. Thus the Father's love is in you. And we looked at John 14 and John 15. The Holy Spirit that abides in us. When we do the commandment, when we keep the, the doctrine, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. When you... Apply yourself to proper Bible living. What God has prescribed for the age that you are in. Us right now being in the church age. We don't work signs. We don't work wonders. We don't talk in tongues. That's not God approved for the church. And you can't say when you do those things, Oh, I'm of God. No, you're a liar. Because you have not rightly divided the word of truth. I've got the love of God, and you're not doing what he's told you to do. You're a liar. And the Bible will call you a liar, not me. You've got to do what Jesus commanded, and you got to abide in the doctrine. Let's read it again, First, Second John 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we had wrought, but that we receive a full reward whosoever transgresses. You can lose a reward if you do not do what the Bible tells you to do. Don't listen to God. Don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't listen to Jesus Christ. You will lose rewards or not even get any at all. 
If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you won't be saved. You'll get no crowns. You'll get no rewards. You'll get the lake of fire with burning forever. As the Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. You don't listen to those commandments. You don't listen to that doctrine. You're lost. Go ye you know, all the world and preach the gospel. Oh, I can't talk. I can't do it. The Bible told you to go. The Bible says pray without ceasing. The Bible says show love to the brethren. Not adhering to that. You don't have God. And we looked at previous, whosoever, transgresseth. We were in abiding. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. Transgression is when you cross the fence. God has a line between unholy and holy. Being saved, you are, on the, you are on the holy side. You are in righteousness. When you cross over to Satan or the flesh or the world, you have transgressed. You have crossed over to where you don't belong. The big no trespassing. And you go and trespass. And abide not in the doctrine of Christ. When you transgress God and abideth not, abiding not in the doctrine is sin. Adam and Eve were told not to eat the fruit. That was God's command to them. And they disobeyed. And they rejected what God said. They transgressed how they ate the fruit. Was eating the fruit a sin? No. But God told them not to eat. And they ate. That's the sin. They transgressed. They did not abide in the doctrine of Christ. They're sinners. And they died. All have sinned, come the short of glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, I got married. Wrong. You're not abiding in Christ. If I kill people and shed blood in the name of Allah, wrong. That's not Bible. That's not the doctrine of Christ. Oh, I'm saved. Sure saved. I'm going to go to heaven. and I'm satisfied with that. And there's nothing else I need to do. I can live however way I want to live. Wrong. That's not the doctrine of Christ. You do not have God. Now, same person laid up in a nursing home, stuck in bed, can't move, can't do nothing. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. This person can't do nothing. But they can pray. The best thing that God can give them, the only thing they can pray for their church, they can pray for people around them. That's the only thing they can do. Prayer is in the Bible. If that's the only thing they can do. They are abiding in the doctrine of Christ and they get the Father and the Son together. They're doing more than somebody who, who's capable of doing and not doing. So, the option in Verse 9, you either have not God or you can get God and the Son. And the Holy Spirit comes alive in you with His fruits. And you're overpowered with joy, love, and blessings by doing right. Abiding. The dictionary, 1828 Webster's Dictionary says rest. Rest in the doctrine. Receive God and the Son. Dwell in the commandments that Christ has given us. Receive the love of Christ. Receive the love of the Father. Receive the love, the fruit of the Spirit. Continue permanently. 
2 Timothy chapter 4. Continue permanently. Verse 6. Paul's end of his life, his last words. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Can you say that? Whether the, the day you're going to die, whenever that is, or the rapture, whenever that's going to be. If you have abound in what Christ has told us to do. If you have rested in the, the doctrines of Jesus Christ found in the Bible. Can you say, I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Well, how can you keep the faith if you don't know what the faith is? There are some people out there believing in a woman to save them. There are people out there believing if you cross your legs and go boom, 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 boom. There's some people out there if I prayed towards a certain location. There are people out there well, I just there's no God at all. I'm okay. There are people out there if I sell a magazine, if I get multiple wives, whatever, whatever, that those are things that dwell in. How can you get say I have kept the faith? If you don't know what the faith is. That will be our next study when we look at the doctrine of Christ. The Bible narrows the field down. When we get to the doctrine of Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. No one else. I am the truth. Everything else must be a lie. And I am the light. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So everything else must be death. The Bible tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. Imagine you're a workman for God. And you get before God and find out you did the wrong work, you did the wrong study, you did the wrong doctrine, and you're cast off into a devil's hell. <coughs> the lake of fire was burning forever, excuse me. What about if you're saved? You appear at the judgment seat of Christ. You stand before Jesus Christ. You get all fouled up. You think God's blessing you. You think your life is hunky-dory. And you walk away from the judgment seat of Christ without no crowns and no rewards for all eternity. Because you didn't properly study. You didn't have a doctrine. You had your own thing. See, John 9 says you either got God or you don't have God. We're going to look at a couple of verses here. And I, I think we're going to skip them. All right, let's go. 1 Corinthians, let's stay with it. 1 Corinthians 3.14. I want to get on the doctrine of Christ. But I want to make sure we know what is right. But 1 Corinthians, I think we need these verses too. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14. Now we're looking at the judgment seat of Christ here. And I don't think we're going to get to the doctrine of Christ. We've already go back and find the previous videos about the judgment seat of Christ. We studied all this. If any man's work shall be burned, uh, no, verse 14. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And we just talked about that. Verse 12, now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble, your entire life comes down to six categories. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. That's it. Your attendance, your career, calling out sick, your entertainment, your vehicle mileage, you being a husband or wife, being a father or a mother, being a child of your parents, a sibling, on your tombstone they'll have the date that you were born. 
and it'll have the date that you died. In between those two dates, there's a dash. That dash is your life. That dash is gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. That is dog food. That is missionary support. That is jokes, gospel tracts, your talk, what you read, what you watched, what you heard through your ears, what you saw with your eyes, what you smelled, what you touched, where you went, what your mouth said and what your mouth ate, what you drank, what you loved what you hated your conduct your character everything about you gold silver precious stone wood hair stone everything whether you did for jesus christ and god whether you did for satan whether you did it for self or the world the motive Actually, why did you do it? Not your pretense. Oh, I did it because people were watching me. No, your real heart, your real conduct, who you were. Just because you went door knocking, because other people are going door knocking, and you didn't want to be talked about, or when you did something for Jesus Christ and got no fame and no glory. It says, and I'm looking, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So the, everything you've done is gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble. Wood, hay, or stubble burn. That is done for Satan. That is done for self. That is done for the world. Gold, silver, precious stones don't burn. That is done for God. That is done for Jesus Christ. That's done for the Holy Spirit. It's going to be all put to the fire. If any man's work abide, now there's the word we're looking at. Let's look at the dictionary again. Rest or dwell to be firm and movable. It don't become ashes. If it does not become ashes, any man's work which abides shall build thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Anything you've done for God, for Jesus Christ, or for the Holy Spirit will remain through the fire. And you get a reward. Now remember, let's go back over here again. Let's look at John 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we had wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whoso transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. So these two go together, abiding. If you step out of the doctrine, and the commandments of God and Jesus Christ. You will lose a reward. If any man's work shall be burned. He shall suffer loss. Second John 8. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Your soul is saved. But your, lost, your works are gone. And that word abiding shows up in our works. What do you think those works of gold, silver, and precious stone will abide? How will they abide? John 15. John 15. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Doing what Jesus Christ told you to do remains, abides, gold, silver, 
precious stones. Second John, verse 9. The last part. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Precious stones, silver, gold. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. Wood, hay, or stubble. Do anything for yourself. Do anything for the world. Do anything for Satan. God is not with you. And neither will those works abide when they are tested before the Lord Jesus Christ. Abiding is so important. It's a very important word that we we said, uh, I don't know if I gave how many times. No, I didn't. I did for whosoever. But abide again. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Rest dwell to continue permanently or in the same state to be firm immovable to remain to continue why because there are rewards eternal rewards and those crowns may be able to be cast at the feet of the one who died for you the one that all heaven will glorify in, in eternity One more place for abiding. 2 Timothy 2.13 uh, I'll take that back. 1 Corinthians 7.20 1 Corinthians 7.20 1 Corinthians 7.20 We'll be going to Timothy. But 1 Corinthians 7 let every man abide in the same calling wherein he's called. Are you called to be a pew sitter in a particular church? Don't go out and be evangelist. Stay in that pew, support that pastor behind the, behind the pulpit, and the brethren that are in that church with you. Are you called to be a preacher behind a pulpit, a pastor? Don't go off on the mission field. Stay in that pulpit, serve those people, love those people, have the burden for those people, and no one else but those people. Are you called to a particular country? Get in that country, stay in that country, and do the work of the Lord in that country. Are you called to be a street preacher? Get on that street corner, preach the gospel, don't become a pastor if that's not your calling, and stay in that position, let me do it again, rest or dwell in that position, continue permanently or in the same state to be firm, immovable, until God moves you. The worst state you can be for this to be out of the commandment of Jesus Christ and out of the doctrine of Christ is you are in a position where God doesn't want you. And you may be proclaiming God is with me. I've got God on this and I've got the love of Jesus Christ. And if you're not biting where they want you, you don't have the love of Christ. You don't have God with you if you are in the wrong place. Demas left. When Demas left, God left. When Demas took off, so did the love of Christ. Stay where you are. That's the most important position God has for you. I'm going to go, I'm going to get all these people saved in this. No, it's not. No. It's not what God wants from you. Again, the person that's in the nursing home who's bedridden can't do nothing. The most important thing God has for them to do is pray. And maybe witness to the doctors or the nurses that come in or the attendants. You trying to tell me the mission field is so important? 
That person can't go. In their heart, they may want to go, but they can't. Find the position God has for you. Find the place that God has for you and stay there. That's important. That's in the Bible. That's starting to show thyself approved on a God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, right to define the truth. You know how you can buy it out of God? By not being where you're supposed to be. A most important spot to be a pew sitter in a church is that's where God wants you. Listen, I've sat in a congregation where when I got up to preach a great message that I had, there was only three people there. I'm happy for those three people rather than having no people. I've given video lessons where there's just me. I'm thankful for the video and people can pick up the video. The most important thing you can do right now, this is what you're calling, is to support that pastor by being there. You may not have money. You may not be able to give money or tithe. But to have some way for that pastor, that, for the message that he worked on, to have hearing ears, that's important. Be faithful at the calling that God has called you to be rather than another calling that you're not supposed to be. That word right there, abide, that's what we're talking about. What about if you abide if not in the calling? Then you're not where you're supposed to be. You know, when a man abides with a woman that's not his wife, that's called adultery. It's called fornication. You know, you could commit a, adultery and fornication against God by being with another God that you're not supposed to be. That God could be Satan. That God could be self. That God could be world. Next place. 2 Timothy 2.13 2 Timothy 2.13 If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. That's written to save people. Maybe your mind goes. Your senses with age, an accident, medication, whatever reason. And in your mind and in your heart, for whatever reason, you deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Troops come in your house, they break down your walls. They hold a sword to your wife or your children. And they're serious. You denounce Jesus Christ in the Bible or your child will die. Not if will die don't come no don't tell me oh I'll no you don't know what you'll do I don't know what I'll do I have no idea I have no idea what I do but if I were to deny Jesus Christ for the sake of my wife or my daughter or my son or even my own life if I'm tied to faggots and they're about to set them on fire, I hate pain. You want to know how much pain I hate? You put me in a dentist chair and I even hate the thought of that Novocaine needle. I don't know what I would do. And maybe in pain, Maybe I would deny Jesus Christ as my Savior. I hope not. But if I did. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. I'm saved and always saved, no matter what this big mouth says. I've got security of my salvation by the word abide by Jesus Christ's testimony that I am Christ
whether I may not say it anymore, Christ will say it for me. Now you talk about the love of God. I'm losing my memory. I've always had, I cannot remember people's names and fate and all that. I'm, I'm horrible. I'll get up and forget what I got up for. I lost many outlines, many ideas, many thoughts, especially at night, because I did not write it down. They're gone. And there have been some good thoughts. There have been some good ideas. There have some been great outlines gone. But Jesus Christ abided still. He said, listen, I cannot deny myself. That's the eternal security promise set by God himself who died for our sins. Whatever condition we are. Now we may want to say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not supposed to love my children more than I love God. You don't know. You may say, oh, you know, I'm going to love God to death. You don't know. And then you don't know what this thing in this, in this skull is going to do one day. What do you do if, uh, I am a conspiracy theorist. What do you do if they pump drug water into your house? And the water you use is drugs so you could be a zombie. For the, what are you going to do then? You had no idea. You had no thought. And it was in what they're doing to you or they put something in the air. Everybody loses their mind. Everyone just loses out, becomes zombie for the government. I'm not trying to start a new realm of religion here. I'm just saying, what do you do? You do know one thing. If you are saved, born again Christian, and your mind goes, or you become a wimp. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Eternal security. Now let me see. We got 32 minutes. We got the Doctor of Christ. Here what we got here. Oh, we got long pages in Doctor of Christ. Maybe be a good time to quit right here. Maybe this would be a good time. Number 47. 47 lessons we've done. Summing up right now. So far. we got many more to go. When we started this in verse 1. I said this is for newborn babes in Christ. To the elderly. In Christ there was milk and there's meat for those who have no teeth for those who are going to lose their teeth and gotta go to mushy food that's John is for you second John is for all of us no matter what state you are you may be listening to this and say, oh that's just boring oh I've known that and there may be someone sitting there, ooh, wow yeah and there's some of you may be saying what did he say what on earth is that don't worry you'll grow you didn't know half the stuff you knew when you first got saved use these videos and these audio to grow in Christ and if you're grown Grow more. Rehearse what already you know. Remember what already. And stick to itness of what the Bible says. We're going to look at Lord willing. It's like going to be a little bit of a session. We're going to look at the doctrine of Christ, Lord willing. And Grow, abide in Christ. Seek the love of God. Seek God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the fruits, and eternal rewards.
by one verse in the Bible that we've already looked at. One word. Abide. Whoever or whosoever, use the word we did last time. Whosoever abided in the ark that Noah built, lived. Whosoever abideth not in the ark that Noah built died. 